So I gave a little bit of a hint of what we're going to talk about next, rammed earth. Uh, and, you know, while Australia counts rammed earth buildings by the thousands, British Columbia boasts dozens, uh, including Randy Bachman's home, apparently, yeah. I'm told. Oh, he just sold it. Oh, okay. Uh, but until now, Ontario's sole claim to, uh, uh, claim to a, a uh, rammed earth house was uh, uh, Shanty Bay's St. Thomas Anglican uh, Church, uh, an 1841 church uh, just east of Barrie. Uh, so Sylvia has now changed that and uh, a few years back, and I had the uh, pleasure of testing the house a couple of times, going out and checking it out. And uh, it was, it's really a, spe it's a special uh, thing to look at, you know, in terms of the texture of the wall and the, uh, the layers. It's a, it is a beautiful wall to look at. And whereas, uh, you know, I, I went to Trent, you know, where things are, you know, Trent University, where things are a little bit, you know, left-leaning politically, and, you know, a lot of tree huggers, and it's, uh, you know, so, you know, this is this was taking uh, 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 rammed earth uh, to, to the next step, and adding the performance and making a sandwich. I'm not, I'm not going to give away your, your sandwich's proprietary recipe, but I heard it was 6% cement. Okay, that's all. Um, so, fresh from presenting at uh, FIAS in the U.S. Uh, in Chicago, uh, Sylvia will share her insights with you. Thank you. So this uh, is, I just actually stole the presentation that Terrell and I did at FIAS, um, and uh, you'll see Terrell's fingerprints on, on this one. Uh, we definitely started with the concept of what does an architect like about rammed earth, and Terrell felt that it was the, the timeless nature of it. It can fit any design strategy, and you can use it in any way you want. The architect's perfect dream. And Greg uh, mentioned the tactility. This is so big. We just had a couple of tours, uh, Ontario Green Energy Doors Open and followed by the Ontario Natural Builders Building Coalition. Anyway, we had, needless to say, uh, several dozen people come through the house. Every single one of them just couldn't wait to get their hands on the walls. And when you look at it up close, it, you get the sense of just how glorious that, that actually feels. It is indeed a different way of building. It's simple. We talk about uh, what Andrew went through with designing the wall. And when you look at what a passive builder has to do to make a passive house actually work, how many layers are there in that wall and what do they all have to do and what happens when one of them wasn't installed just right? We just ram it in. That's it. You've got rammed earth, you've got insulation, and you've got rammed earth. That's it. It goes around the corners. It goes completely from the roof line down to the footing. There are no thermal bridges. These are ledger boards that are uh, epoxied in place and balloon form uh, framing. And uh, as Tara loves to draw in all of her drawings for us, the rammed earth is the vapor barrier. The rammed earth is the air barrier. That's it. We do have one thing that we have uh, when uh, Greg mentioned proprietary, and Australia, interestingly enough, this stuff comes from Australia, and that's what it doesn't do, that's what it does. This was the very last wall that we built, we got to the very end, and we'd run out of plastic here. And I said, oh, never mind, it's going to be an interior wall, it's never going to see the, the uh, light of day. Well, except that the roof didn't get put on until the middle of February, at which point this was totally soaked and everywhere that we had not run out of plastic here was totally dry. Very impressive. Makes a great exterior surface and a great interior finish. And isn't that one of the best things when you can eliminate, how many layers of processing have we eliminated 
by just having one substance that is your exterior finish, your vapor barrier, air barrier, blah, 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 and your interior finish. It's it. It's got, because of that, very low embodied energy. Well, and also because the dirt is just dirt. What do we have most of on Earth? Yeah, that's what it's called. We have subsoil, huge amounts of subsoil everywhere. And most of that subsoil is perfectly suitable to make buildings out of. And you really don't need that much even at that. What we used was a gravel pit down the road and uh, a few loads of that, and you're done. And it's actually the leftover stuff after they've extracted the gravel from the gravel pit. And uh, as you can see from oops, back to that, um, the uh, embodied energy of uh, this is um, cement stabilized earth block, which is another version of round earth at six percent. Our house was actually probably closer to five percent. We figured out, but anyway, at six percent, it's still lower than anything else. <coughs> Concrete block, every anything. Uh, will this actually work? No, it didn't work. I had it loaded. You have to bring it with you. Yeah, it was there. Never, never mind. Um, <laughs> that was Cheryl's lovely little thing that we'll talk about later. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the process is really simple. You've got somebody who's pneumatically tamping here. We finish off in any awkward areas with some hand tamping, very traditional, old-fashioned way of doing it. It's very labor-intensive. Uh, it does have a an awful lot of rebar here in Ontario because it has to be an engineered building. No Ontario engineer is going to put a stamp on something without at least some rebar. But those workers, very intense labor, they love it. They absolutely love it. I, they beg me to come back and build some more. It's been around forever and a day. This is the Great Wall of China. Rammed earth all the way out through the desert. The stuff is 2,500 years old, still looking fine. These are, um, you can see the modern apartment buildings there, but these apartment buildings have been permanently lived in for 500 years, continuously through earthquakes, floods, wars, revolution, you name it, and they're still lived in today. There are um, over 300 of, of these in a certain area of China, and fabulous, beautiful examples of round earth. It started up probably around the same time period in Europe, and here it is, uh, the Alhambra Palace in Spain. It's got a good history to it. It's been around, stood the test of time. And now it is found just about everywhere in the world. You'll notice a fairly uh, dearth of it here in, in Canada, but we're going to change that, so that's okay. We do have some in Canada. This is the Incomeet Cultural Center in Soyuz at BC, and a gorgeous piece of render structure there. And that's actually a, a nice modern architect uh, from Australia. It's, they've got a lot, as we mentioned in there. And there's our house in all its glory. Uh, with all of its fabulous architectural detailing with, with Terrell, as uh, Andrew talked about, it's important to have your overhangs that shade appropriately in the summer. This uh, is, as you can see, a, a time of the year when you want to get lots of sun in and sun comes in. This is another connection with Andrew. Under this is the septic system designed by Andrew. <laughs> And there is Terrell's adorable son. <laughs> when we are trying to sell passive houses, we've now come to the realization that the best way to do this is to tell people how incredibly comfortable it is to live in a passive house. And there's Maria nodding. Yes, it really, really is. How does it work with rammed earth? It's incredibly comfortable because you get that constant temperature which is what you're aiming for in a passive house. But you also get constant humidity because the walls themselves not only absorb that light and the heat that's coming in the windows, but they absorb any excess humidity and release it when it gets drier. 
naturally hygroscopic. But not only does the, uh, the rammed earth absorb the light where the light hits, but it moves it very well through the material. So it's very absorbent of heat and then passes that heat naturally along. So that when it's lighting up one particular zone, the parts that are in shadow are the same temperature. You can put your hand on it and there's very little temperature difference. That heat quickly reaches equilibrium. Uh, and in the summer, you can see here it must be the summer because the light is not on the wall anymore. In fact, this is just after the vernal equinox, in case you're keeping track. And the, the rammed earth continues to absorb that heat. And then in the nighttime, due to Terrell's brilliant design of, pa of passive ventilation, you get the nighttime purging, the uh, air cools down, the walls cool back down again, and are ready to be recharged with any extra heat the next day. We don't have an air conditioner. We don't have a furnace. It's great. And there's my guilty secret. You can fill that bathtub up with water in the middle of winter, and that window does not steam up. When that heat comes in, and this uh, on the uh, on the right hand side, it's a sunny January day, and the lights coming in, warming everything up inside the house. What's it doing to the outside? Well, the outside layer is also rammed earth. This is a little bit later, and around the corner on the west side, and you get these places where you have a, a microclimate being created because of the rammed earth. This was not a windy day, in fact, because of the wind drifts. This was simply the way that the, the snow uh, went through the, the cycles. We know that this is a, a complex problem. Although it's a very simple wall system, there are things going on with heat and moisture transfer through these walls that we have not been able to model yet. And it's, it is a bit of a, a problem for us. We tell you, rammed earth behaves in a way that no other substance behaves, and you kind of nod and go, mm hmm, yeah, everybody says that about their system. It really does, and has been observed in a vernacular sense for all of those thousands of years that people have been building with rammed earth and living comfortably in it and talking about how comfortable it is to live in it. We need to now set about to prove why it works and what's actually going on. We know it's a dynamic problem. It changes over time as the moisture gets absorbed, as the heat gets absorbed, as the heat uh, disappears. What you're looking at here is there's our system with the insulation in the middle and that's the temperature that it stays inside even though the exterior temperature is changing. Here's another system showing much the same thing, flat-lined interior measurements of temperature. And what's happening there is you get a time lag as the heat moves in and out. So what we want to do is uh, another brilliant design by Stone Throw Design. Thank you, Terrell. We uh, are getting a lot of interest in building this. This is what we're hoping to be our affordable house. Rammed earth can be expensive because it is labor intensive. And to build a custom home where people just have these ideas of what they want, heaven forbid we allow clients to have ideas, but they do. And once that happens, that can get expensive. But with this, we're not giving clients the ability to have too many ideas. And in particular, we're not letting them have ideas about how the envelope goes. That's my job. I'm going to make sure that this is easily built by a rammed earth builder and that it performs to passive house standard. So I'm keeping charge of the whole of the building envelope, but doing it in an efficient enough way that I can keep my costs down, certainly under $200 a square foot. I'm, I'm aiming for that $175 a square foot that uh, is a nice magic number. Uh, but we haven't built one yet, so I'll get back to you next year and let you know how that goes. 
One of the things that we're going to do in each of these homes, and be, part of what obviously is going to keep the cost down is that we're building the same thing over and over again. And we're going to make sure that we put in some of those same moisture uh, and humidity and temperature sensors that Russell is talking about. This is exactly the picture that, uh, that he was showing you. <coughs> and our, oh, we're, as you can see, going to distribute them throughout the wall. We want to know how the heat is moving through the whole wall. What happens to the wall temperature right near the insulation compared to near the exterior parts of it? And we'll distribute them around the house so that we get a good sense of what's happening on each of the walls. Is it affected the sun's shining and where it's not? Um, are, are corners any different? So that's our concept. Uh, and I'm going to just point out that rammed earth can be an awful lot of fun to build, not just for the workers who just love ramming, but because you can have fun with, with what you do with it. This really is an architectural, a dream for an architect, a designer, or anybody. Uh, this is a feature wall that, um, that we built uh, in Ottawa, a whole other story about getting building permits in Ottawa. And this was this summer where the uh, clients had sourced some ammonite fossils that they wanted put in the walls. So we've, we've certainly done some fun things. Uh, I think that's about it for the slides that I've got. And I think I've rushed through quickly enough that if you would like to ask a question, I, we can afford that. Everybody wants to know more about rammed earth. No. Okay. Cool. Wow, this is so easy. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. I, I have to say, uh, with uh, with kids in the house, having painted the house uh, probably about seven years ago. Uh, I, I sh maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe some of you paint your houses like every three years. But I'm like, oh, man, i got to paint the house again. And I look at this like, when's the last time you painted? Uh, never and never. Exactly. Outside, inside, low maintenance. It, it is maintenance. 